is everybody doing? And yes, I did promise you all that <laughs> I was going to stream. But again, in my defense, <laughs> hopefully I'm talking because y'all can hear me. Yeah, you should be able to hear me. Um, in my defense, I did not say when I was going to stream. <laughs> I just said, um, and as I'm adjusting my light here. Um, oh, my God. So much better. I mean, for right now, it's so much better. Um, yeah. <laughs> so let's start that over for editing purposes. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. It is super, super early. Yeah. Um, like I said before, um, I said that uh, I definitely was going to stream, but I didn't tell you specifically what, what time. I didn't even know what time because I've been traveling so much. Well, I was traveling this weekend, not so much. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> That's why I was very strategic with my post. Uh, just like, subscribe, and follow to get the notification when I'm on. <laughs> and most likely I am going to post this uh, back into social media just so people can see it because I promised some people that I was gonna stream, um, but um, I know a lot of y'all probably aren't up right now, so I'm kind of streaming uh, into the abyss. But I'm actually, to be honest, I'm very <laughs> wired right now. Um, I just came back from a esports tournament and um, a little mini conference session in San Antonio and. Before, after that ended, I didn't want to leave right away. Not because I was too excited, or I was, but I wanted to rest. I, I was too tired to drive. And I kind of like driving at night. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to rush it. I mean, let's just be honest. I didn't want to rush and um, get to where I uh, was too tired to even do anything. So that's why uh i'm doing this so early in the morning i know a lot of you guys got work in a couple of hours um i'm like i said i'm still wired i am basically taking it easy tomorrow anyway i'm not gonna really do the most <laughs> so that's why i'm like i'm just gonna do it uh and plus that's about me it's about me maintaining consistency right so if you guys aren't watching it now, you're going to watch it later. We're on all the social media channels, except for Facebook. Facebook it was acted up, uh, but we're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, um, all your main ones. Um, hopefully YouTube is going to come up. Uh, if not, I, I'll, obviously I will upload that later for you guys to watch. So um, again, without further ado, Let's go on ahead and get to our What's Up in Gaming and Tech. Do, 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 do. I don't have a theme. Sorry. Maybe I'll get something. Who knows? <laughs> but, yeah, let's go on ahead and uh, put some of that out there. Just go through this real quick. So, yeah, like I said, we had I had a panel presentation in San Antonio just now. Like I said, I just came back from that. And... The focus was for me talking about, and the others that were on the panel, uh, uh, I want to say, uh, preparing students for pathway, a range of career pathway through esports. Um, special shout out to all the people who were on the panel, a great diverse group of people from all stages of, of career sets, and not just in this panel session, but there were other panel sessions that were there along with the tournament where we were just all all talking about you know how we got into this space and there's no one right or wrong way to get into it but we were there just giving special tips and things to think about to students and to parents about what it means to really be in this space and i especially want to give a special shout out to dr cliff zinkgraf <laughs> um Really, he gave me some really great insights. And I'm also going to say this was really great because this is my first 
presentation, panel presentation going in as a doctoral candidate. So I'm really super excited about that. So, <laughs> so not only was this my first presentation panel session as a doctoral candidate, I got to sit, sit next to someone that's already um, has their doctoral degree in this space. So that was very powerful. That's something that I can check off my um, my bucket list. I've presented with uh, doctors before, but I hadn't been that, that close to that seat yet. So it was really awesome. And I think that was very powerful for people to see that, oh, somebody has this type of degree and that's in this industry doing this. So yes, it's possible to do whatever you want to do in this industry. You just got to plan it and take it. So again, I can't wait to do more with um, the Play ES team. Thank you, NASA, for uh, for allowing me to present my perspective uh, uh, on my esports journey and, and career pathways. And again, if any of you guys have questions about that, you not you guys know where I'm at. Let's move on. This is pretty big, okay? Um, this happened, I guess, last week or the week before. And this is from the New York Times um, by Natasha Singer. I want to make sure I give her credits and and the public credit where credit is due. So in this article, uh, Florida's new law prohibits social media accounts for uh, uh, kids under 14 and it requires parental consent um, for them to, if, they're, if they uh, can be on social media, right? Make sure I said that correctly. Flores new law prohibits social media accounts for under 14 and requires parental consent for ages 14 to 15, okay? This is backed by Governor DeSantis from Florida, and it aims to protect young users online, but faces potential legal challenges. This is part of a wider effort towards safer online environments for youth. It's, that's been a big concern. What does it mean to be online? What are we doing? Um, how can we uh, regulate this? Now, I'm not here to preach about this, being neither being for or against, but I'm just putting this out there. This is where we're at right now um, when it comes to social media. What do you all think about this? Is this something that needs to happen? Now, I will say that a lot of us are very tech savvy and we have ways to get around things. I'm, I'm not promoting anything, but I've been in this space long enough. Um, so it, I'm very curious to see how far this is going to go, uh, what's going to happen, um, how, how far, uh, nationwide this is going to be, get, um, hopefully we'll keep following this story. Um, uh, if you want to read more about it, I have the highlights here, but if you want to read more about it, I have the link here on the screen for you to take a look at. Very good article to read, uh, share it with others. Really something that really think about as we're talking about being more in this space. Um, no matter what age you are, uh, but especially for our younger ones where they're already in this technology space, they come out born with it <laughs> pretty much. Um, and it's part of their culture, it's part of their environment. So what does that mean now? What are, what are we regulating? How are we educating those who aren't really in it, but, you know, are raising people who are in it? So those are some things that, um, you might want to, we all might want to research and think about um, moving forward and come up with our own opinions about um, how we feel about it. So, speaking of regulating, want to give a special shout out to Annabelle uh, Ashley Anthony um, uh, from uh, Melanin Gamers and the Watch Team for creating this, what you see on the screen. Now, we all or most of us are familiar with the ESRB ratings on video games, which means that if you're not familiar with that, they're um, E, basically E, T, A, M. Uh, there's very few A's out there, but those are basically the ones where you can tell uh, what type of rating those games are, whether what age appropriate games for children are, if that makes sense with what I said. Again, it's early in the morning. Well, in this sense, we haven't really talked about what it means to be online with these games. It's a completely different ball game once you get online. For example, and I'm just going to say an example. I'm not trying to shout, uh, 
you know, put anybody on blast. But let's say Minecraft, for example. Minecraft could be rated E, but what does it look like once you open that door to get online? How are you rating things? How is it being rated online? So the things that we're looking at here are what, how, are, how are things judged by gender discrimination, violence, crude humor, racism, those things like that. What, what is the percentage of that toxicity level that's going, uh, that's being presented there? This is an ongoing survey, so this isn't a uh, this isn't a whole list of games, but this is a great step moving forward because not only should we be thinking about what the ratings are when you're purchasing the game, but what does it look like when you are now officially going into the online space? What should we be looking for? And this is no way meaning that oh well, I'm never gonna play a game again, but it's something for us as end users to think about when we're entering the online space and how toxic can it be, uh, very, whether it's very high or very low. Feel free to go on uh, this, uh, the website that you see at the bottom, the LinkedIn link that you see on the uh, right-hand side. Uh, that's just a little post that sh uh, uh, she made about it. But go through there. This is just an example that you see here on the screen about um, the experience of toxicity that's in the game. Again, this doesn't mean that you should never play these games. It is just to prepare you for what you're about to enter into it once you get into this space. This is something that I feel that's been a long time coming. Um, and I think you can put more of your input here. Again, this is still ongoing. They're still working on some things, but this is great. Again, special... And I gotta give another round of applause for that one. So, th this is amazing. So this is the kind. This is the kind of thing that needs to be spread around. So go on the site. If there's a game that maybe you feel like, oh, I, this really needs to be rated, maybe send them a message and say, hey, can, are you working on this? Well, I would love to see your take on what the toxicity level is um, online. Great start, great start. All right, so as I told you guys before, I am a doctoral candidate. And what's been floating out there um, is I'm looking for educators. Let me make that clear. Educators to fill out a questionnaire about video games and education how do you feel like it's being impacted in education? So if you're an educator or educator closely adjacent, meaning that you're still in the educator space, doesn't mean necessarily you're a classroom teacher, but you're still in the educator space, no matter if you're K-12, higher ed, nonprofit area, you're educating something, uh, and you're interested in doing this survey, I want you to please send me a DM on any of my social media channels. The link that you see there is on the screen, link.space forward slash at edtechtinker. Feel free to connect with me on any of those. Send me a direct DM saying, hey, I'm really interested in taking the survey. I want to see what kind of data you're going to bring to the table. And um, I will send you that direct link. Again, you must be some type of educator. I will look you up <laughs> to, to make sure that, hey, you are in that space in some way, shape, or form. But I also want to give a special shout out because this is kind of my internship project with Clever, with uh, uh, Bride Dickman uh, in Clever Life Studios. They've really been supportive and helping me grow this. Um, it's a win-win for them and it's a win-win for me. Um, we're really looking at what does it mean to uh, be content creators, to be video game creators uh, within the school system? What, where do, where do we need this? Where do educators need the support? What are they gaining? What are they lacking? How can we make it better? How can we really align it with curriculum and instruction? Those are things that um, we, I, we can see. What can we debunk so we can make educators feel a little bit more comfortable? Where, uh, what are we um, missing the mark with? What are we successful with? How can we get those? naysayers more on um, more on board maybe not to just go all in but you know hey be that support 
So again, feel free to, to reach out to me, DM me on any of my social uh, media channels, link that space for slash edtech ticker, and I will discuss about giving you that survey link. Happy to share that with you. And again, once again, if you have any gaming or technology news that you want to share, hey, follow me. Uh, send me a DM. Um, I'm more than happy to see uh, what's going on in the space. I can't do it all. <laughs> um, but I'm more than happy to share your news, news that you think is relevant, that needs to be spread out more, no matter if it's uh, gaming, esports, technology, ed tech. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to share articles and summarize if, something there's, if there's something that's great that you're doing that's of significance. Love to share it. So that's all for the news right now. That's all of what's going on in gaming and tech until the next two weeks, hopefully. All right. So, <laughs> now it's time for the fun stuff. Aren't we all excited? Let's go ahead and we're going to get into that. We, um, ooh, I'm going to turn down my, um, my TV because it's kind of loud. But um, we're going to get into it, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for us to play some Luigi Mansion. And I don't remember I, I always say that i don't remember where we left off but um i know uh we're in a we're in a good spot i know we're in a good spot i know we're in an area where um i might just go ahead and just mute this regardless and make sure that uh i'm being heard on my headphones because I hear myself through the computer. But let's uh, switch a switcheroo here. 